Well, it depends on the bacteria which is present in the wound. Some bacteria will definitely cause slower wound healing. Other bacteria might be there without causing a significant harm. But in chronic wounds, uh, signs of local infection is often vague. It is difficult to know when to start treatments. Um, dressings intended for treatment of infected wounds often contain antimicrobial agents. And these agents might by themselves also cause harm to the wound. They can be cytotoxic effects, but also all antimicrobial agents that kill bacteria will cause a release of endotoxin. And endotoxin is a very potent inflammatory agent, and that will also affect the wound. The surface of sorbite is hydrophobic, and most bacteria, most common wound pathogens are also hydrophobic or have developed structures to be able to attach to hydrophobic surfaces. So when two hydrophobic surfaces meet, they can bind firmly together. And once bound to sorbact, they are removed from the wound and then the bioburden in the wound is reduced. Actually, if you look at sorbact in a very high magnification, you could actually see that the bacteria attaching to the surface have developed microstructures, adhesion points, also indicating that the binding can be very strong. No, sorbact is not an antimicrobial wound dressing according to normal criteria. The surface of sorobact is not antimicrobial, it binds bacteria. Uh, at the same time, we have many clinical studies showing that the bioburden in wounds is reduced after treatment with sorobact. So, in that sense, you could say that sorobact has an antimicrobial effect. Um, binding to sorobact is also very firm. So that explains why we see a strong reduction of the growth rate of the bacteria that has bound to sorbact. As an in vitro scientist, I must say, always trust clinical data, if there are any. And for sorbact, we have a lot of clinical data. Um, because it's not always easy to translate the effect between in vitro and in vivo. Um, that being said, we also have a lot of different models evaluating the effect of sorbact in vitro. We can directly measure binding, but there is also a standardized in vitro model called the Japanese Industrial Standard for Antimicrobial Textiles, number 1902. And when using that, you apply bacteria on top of a reference material and on top of sorbact. And after 24 hours, you evaluate how many bacteria that is you are able to release from the material. And in that model, we see uh, very few bacteria being released from sorbact, which translates into a strong antimicrobial activity. When we have studied this in vitro, we have seen that uh, when bacteria have bound to sorbact, they have a reduced growth rate. So binding definitely affects the bacteria and slows them down. At the same time, uh, we can also see that the bacteria are not killed. And this could actually be a good thing, because if the bacteria would break upon contact with sorbact, you could risk uh, releasing more endotoxin. And endotoxin is a very potent inducer of inflammation. We have done some in vitro testing uh, using the Japanese industrial standard 1902 and to see for how long bac um, bacteria keep binding to sorbact. And we did this by repeatedly inoculate uh, the dressing with new bacteria every day for seven days. And we could see that sorbite had a strong antimicrobial activity during this entire period. 
But this, of course, does not mean that the dressing always can be used for seven days uh, in a wound because every wound is different and the exudate levels, etc., will determine for how long you can use the dressing. But if the clinical conditions allow it, you can have it on for seven days. Uh, this is a very common question for us. And we have not tested all bacteria, but we have tested several common wound pathogens with good results. And in the Japanese Industrial Standard Model 1902, we have also evaluated the antimicrobial activity of the so-called WHO prioritized pathogens. So these are a number of microorganisms that are considered especially challenging for the healthcare. And they all carry antibiotic resistance genes. And in the GSL 1902 model, we see very good activity on sorbact on those pathogens. There is also some interesting literature evidence that more virulent or pathogenic bacteria actually become more hydrophobic on their surface. And that could mean that they bind even better to sorbact.